My name is David Buckley. I'm professor of political science, the Paul Weber Endowed Chair of Politics, Science, and Religion, um, and director of the Center for Asian Democracy at the University of Louisville. And I'm here today at USIP for a convening on the involvement of religious actors in efforts to promote electoral integrity. First of all, in a lot of places, actually, in the field, this does go on, right? It's actually taken for granted that religious actors would be very involved in election observation, for instance, or monitoring election violence. But from the outside, I think that some policymakers, uh, maybe reflecting their own lack of comfort with religious topics, um, might uh, not have the personal capacity to engage with these topics as easily. Um, and I do think there's also a sense in the election space um, that certain kinds of religious engagement um, could be counterproductive or actually could undermine the quality of, uh, of political participation. Um, and so at the risk of doing harm, um, the, the goal is to change the subject. First of all, in terms of the capacity that religious organizations often have. Um, this can include um, networks of houses of worship, right, in rural areas, um, and sort of an ability to reach parts of the state that may be beyond the central government's reach. But it can go beyond houses of worship, too. It can go to religious infrastructure like healthcare clinics, um, schools, um, even media networks that may be very useful to the process of preparing for an election and even administering the election on election day. So capacity is part of the story, I think. Um, and another part of the story, not always, but at times, is the moral authority that religious uh, leaders of different kinds bring um, to their public roles. Um, religious leaders often occupy a space that is not the state, um, but, uh, but has strong relationships with state actors. And it's also not fully in civil society, right? but, um, but with strong ties to other actors in civil society. And that sort of bridging role and authority may allow them to build credibility for elections, to increase confidence in election results and to uh, foster inclusive participation um, when, uh, uh, when in partnership with election planners. The case that I know best where this has played out is the Philippines. Um, going back to um, the People Power Revolution of 1986, the first Edsa Revolution, um, religious actors were deeply involved in uh, what we would now call citizen election monitoring validating the process through which votes were recorded and tabulated. That still goes on today through networks uh, like NAMFRO, which goes back to that period, the National uh, Citizens Movement for Free Elections, as well as newer networks like the Parish Pastoral Council for Responsible Voting. These are networks that are mobilizing literally hundreds of thousands of citizen election observers um, in uh, both national and also sort of more localized elections. Um, to, uh, to do poll watching and, and sort of also before the election period and uh, civic education. There would be other examples that, uh, that would point to other phases of the election cycle, right? So uh, poll watching is on election day itself. Religious networks can be very useful um, and are used in the Philippines related to pre-election civic education. So transitions, for instance, to new voting technologies, right? How will voters find out about those? How will they uh, be, uh, be included in the registration process? Religious networks may be very useful in, uh, in bridging those kinds of potential gaps, especially to more excluded portions of populations. Mm -hmm.